Rescue workers recover the body of Femi Oshibona, the developer of the 21-story building that collapsed in Ikoi. But who gave approval for the construction and what checks were done to ensure the building code is fallen? We'll seek for answers this morning. Good morning and welcome to the breakfast on a Friday morning. Looks like it's going to be a very wet one, seeing uh, what the weather is turning into this morning. I am Osaogi Ogbonwa. Welcome to Plus TV Africa. And I am Messi Bopo. It's good to have you join us this morning. As always, we kick off with uh, top trending stories and I'm pretty sure you know where this is going. Yesterday, uh, late yesterday, uh, the body of the developer of the 21-story building in Ikoi, which collapsed, Femi Oshibana, was found. Um, late in the evening, I had spoken with our Plus TV correspondent who was live uh, over there in Nikoi, and uh, uh, she, of course, uh, gave us a feedback as to what exactly was going on at that time uh, when the body was found. She had some complaints, uh, you know, but I, would, uh, I think we're gonna, we could reconnect with her this morning. Uh, Ungozika Ohai Chesi, good morning. Can you hear us? Yes, good morning. I can hear you. All right. So let's uh, pick up from where we left yesterday. Um, share with us exactly how it played out uh, when his body was found. Okay. So, so yesterday, around 6 14, the body of Mr. Femi Oshibono was found at the scene. And around 6 30, we discovered some. Nigerian uh, Nigeria Army officials they arrived at the, they arrived at the scene and there was a lot of noise at that time so it was obvious that someone's body that is very important in the state has been found there and we believe that it was the body of Mr. Femi and a few minutes later work stopped the rescue officer stopped working you know and around seven forty five. His body was leaving the, the the scene at that time, and everybody was just complaining why they stopped work and all that. So when the body left that place, there is there is this guy there. He has been there since Monday. He's looking for his friend that was trapped in there, and there was a little there was a mild struggle between him and the Nigerian official, the Nigerian army official at that time. That why did they stop working when the man's body left the scene and everybody was just trooping out of the building? You know, so there was a little problem at that time. The man was fighting with the Nigerian with army officials that they should start work immediately. So it's unfortunate that they stopped work at that time. Yeah, yeah, they made it look like it was all about Mr. Femi's body. That that was the actual thing they were searching for. Every other person did not matter at that time while their family were all around there crying, you know, telling them to continue working. They should bring out the remaining bodies that are there so they can be able to identify their, their family that was stuck in there. So after that time, did work ever continue or that was the end for the day? They didn't continue. So it was the because end for the day? at that time, I was there and I wasn't happy with what was happening. They were trying to fight the guy. And I went all the way down to Salomo. I had to come back to the scene because I forgot something. 30 minutes later, they still haven't started working. Ungozika Ohaichisi, thank you very much for, for joining us uh, this morning. And, uh, thank um, you very much. She's still going to be on ground there to uh, give feed uh, as to what exactly is going on over there. Um, it's really, really sad. Um, I, 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 I did speak with her yesterday and she had the same um, you know, narration about uh, work being put on hold when um, the body of the developer was found, um, which, of course, entirely wrong, you know, because every single person who is missing and those family members who are there uh, would continue, and of course, would continue to hope that they can still find, you know, um, you know their family members alive. Um, but it's... Really sad. We've repeatedly spoken about time. And so every 10 minutes, 15 minutes, that work, you know, stops. You know, you you are putting that person's life even at more risk. Um, so it really, really, it's really, really heartbreaking. But you know, um, the breaking news is that uh, Femi Oshibona's body has been found. Um, I saw, um, you know, all over social media yesterday, uh, people posting, you know, rest in peace, good night, and you know, and whatnot. 
Um, the state governor has also declared a three-day mourning, you know, with regards to people who have died in that, um, in that um, disaster. Hopefully, you know, they're able to finish as quickly as possible to conclude search and rescue and, and if possible, still save a life that might still be hanging by a thread in there. You know, the question now would be, is there a possibility that you still have people um, who would survive? Not to say that, um, well, you know, that bags and, baggages, chance, but I think uh, bags and baggages should be packed and moved away. But, I mean, it's really, really sad because uh, we've been seeing reports and all of the videos uh, coming from that particular scene, people complaining of the, the pattern, the mode of operation, yes. you know, the speed at which they're working. And if uh, that uh, report is something to go by, it's really, really bad that we do not pay attention to the lives of the people. Over time, you see that if uh, you have a situation where 10 was killed, we try to downplay the figures. It doesn't matter, even if it's one. One life actually matters. It doesn't matter if it's one person that died. It's a lot. And you never can tell, you know, the pain that a lot of persons will be. You know, for me, it's the fact that um, we live in a society where things are actually not very, I mean, things are not very smooth. You want to talk about the um, employment rate and all of that. And you have a lot of these persons who are trying to make something out of their life. People actually going out every morning to earn a living. And this is what happened because of what? Someone actually, you know, feel that their job or someone became very greedy and yeah. uh, someone is ignorant, well, just as we, we spoke with our guest yesterday. It's, it's really, really it's sad. I do feel, be, um, you know, goosebumps at, at this point in some time. Some of the things that we'll, talk, we'll be talking about this morning. But let's um, get you to watch this. We have uh, a, a quick report to share with you and we'll be back after this. Just a clip of uh, the drama that, of course, uh, played out yesterday after the body of uh, the developer, Femi Oshibona, was found yesterday. A reporter said uh, that after work stopped, um, a few family members got agitated because, you know, they're asking uh, why is such and rescue operation, you know, currently on hold, you know, after his body was found. Um, there's still a chance of finding somebody alive. There's still a chance of at least maybe a very, very slim chance of, of you know, rescuing someone who might still be, be alive in that um, rubble. Um, but, but sadly, we, we, live in, we live in a country where, you know, and I've been saying this right from the day that this happened, um, how nobody really will be asked these questions and nobody would take responsibility for the failures at, you know, many, many levels with this. The failure of search and rescue to have begun, you know, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes after this incident happened. The failure of whoever it is, you know, that led to the, you know, that, you know, I mean, whoever's lapses led to the collapse of this building. Um, who is going to be questioned, you know, now that we've, we're hearing that they paused to work for 30 minutes or 45 minutes? I mean, so many people that, I mean, there's so many questions that need to be asked and people need to always take responsibility for these things. But we, we live in a society where there will almost be no responsibility taken for these little, you know, glitches here and there. And, and, and there's, there's zero respect and value for that life. And it's, it's, it hurts to see how insensitive, Very insensitive. Um, you know, people are when they are not really affected, when it's not really their family member or it's not really, you know, anything that concerns them directly. There, there's it's a high level of insensitivity. And, you know, the fact that, you know, there's almost also a display of, you know, might. You want to see... Um we want to begin to flex muscle and at every point in time we want to begin to uh, show who is powerful and who is most important so it's really really sad just like i mentioned yesterday what's on the street already saying you know it's a big boy 
Uh, there are big boys involved in all of this, so it would definitely be covered up. Nothing will happen. And I'm hoping that, you know, the government would understand that the people already uh, can actually predict what's going to happen. And that narrative should never, never come to well, pass. I don't, I don't, I don't want to say, because I'm, I'm not necessarily going to say that nothing will happen. I'm, the governor has set up a, you know, a committee. Um, you know, to look into this, even if there's people who criticize it and say this is really, a, it's a, it should be a criminal investigation, not for any committee to be set up. Nobody needs a panel to be set up to look into this. It's a criminal investigation and that's what it should be. It should be handled by the police. But like I said to you yesterday, w when we get to that stage, we will talk about, you know, whether people would, you know, be held responsible for this. I'm just saying that it hurts me that on the different levels of, of failure, you know, around all of this that is playing out, we don't live in a society where people can see that they are failing in this tiny regard. In this, you know, other regard here, you are failing. And because there, there would be almost no questions asked, you know, on, on that level. NEMA, LASEMA, um, the FRSC, the Nigerian Army, every single person who's involved in the search and rescue, there's different tiny little levels of failings or failure that you can spot there. I saw a woman yesterday who was crying and saying that the the method with which they are carrying out the search and rescue is is it, it doesn't look you know good enough and she she was basically because she was speaking Yoruba I couldn't understand but she was saying that they weren't doing it properly that the way that they were doing it you could even hurt more people who are under the you know on that um, that rubble um, and I said it before I remember that I asked the the, the person we interviewed on on Tuesday this same question. What do you see in this search and rescue that you think is completely ina inadequate? Are they doing it properly? Is this the right way to do it? And his response was, well, you know, the Lagos State government is doing their best, you know, and so let's because them, they don't have, you know, encourage you know, the them. They don't have the equipment, so let's do with what we have. But that should never be the case. And, and to, we should not I, I, go home and you, celebrate and say, okay, well, they've given their you best. You know, to shock you now is that this would happen in future. I am not a prophet of doom. I'm just saying that this will happen. And the truth is we will not, if you look at what, what's going to happen in the nearest future, uh, it's not because, you know, one is actually trying to predict, oh, th this is really going to happen or someone's being very negative. Yeah, the point is it's going to happen. And what lessons have we learned? Nothing. So you're going to see the same old, same old. We're going back in the same, uh, you know, pattern. Because at the end of the day, one is suspected that with all of the experiences that we have had over time, it's not the first, it's not the second, and it will not be the last. How, what have we learned from it? What measures are we putting up to say, okay, we need to improve on all of this, we need to improve. Don't we know that this is a city that's really congested and traffic is a major issue? I am not here seated, you know, trying to say, oh yeah, they have done something, but that's not enough. We're expected yeah. more. I mean, you know, looking at the toll, um, the figures, uh, quite, quite really, really sad. Anyway, um, I think we're going to wrap up uh, plus trend, um, well, top trending this morning, not plus trending. Um, and of course, uh, Off the Press comes up next with GD Johnson. He's going to be looking at the major stories, making headlines across Nigeria this morning and gets in to share his thoughts with us. We'll be back after this short break.